Did the freeze out game in 1985 really happen? This is a conspiracy that I've been wondering because I've done a lot of research and I've came to two conclusions. But before I start with the video, I'd like to say one thing. I just want to really say a massive thank you to all of you guys that have supported me on my return to YouTube. I really do appreciate it. Like, the views and subs have only grown since I've got back and I do really, really appreciate your support. All the comments, all the likes, all the new subscribers, welcome. I just want to just say a massive thank you because it's made my life so much easier returning back to YouTube. Anyway, as we all know, Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas have had a feud, a kind of feud that everyone in the whole NBA world kind of knows. But how did this feud even happen? When was the beginning of the beef between these two legends? Well, apparently, it all began in 1985, in what was called the freeze-out game. Okay, so what happened in his rookie all-star game in Indiana, in Indianapolis, Isaiah led a movement among the Eastern vets, this is Michael's rookie all-star game, to freeze out Michael Jordan. Michael didn't like it. He doesn't like to lose even some silly all-star game. And he held it against Isaiah to his, till death do them part. But did it really happen? Is this freeze out game real? Or is it just something that was made up? Something that was hyped by the media and two, used by Jordan as a way to motivate himself since we all know how competitive he really was and he would use anything to motivate himself. A few things before I start, I read this story in an article written by a man named Sam Smith on the HistoryBulls.com website, so I'll link that in the description if you guys want to read it yourself. Secondly, if you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to subscribe for more, leave a like if you guys want to support me and the channel, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. First, let's state the reasons why it may not be real, and then afterwards, let the conspiracy theory begin. So the first reason why it may not be real. Isaiah Thomas was only a fourth year player in the league. Would he really have the ability to influence superstar players like Larry Bird, Julius Irving, Moses Malone, Magic Johnson, and George Gervin? Would he be able to come up with a plan to prevent Jordan from doing anything? And not to mention, also sell it to his head coach who had to be on the plan to stop Jordan too? Thomas said, and I quote, I laugh at the thought, because I can definitely control those guys, he said sarcastically. Nonetheless, it became accepted as fact. Thomas was first questioned about it not long after the game, and he said, and I quote, I remember people started writing about it, and then started talking about it, and then all of a sudden it became the truth, he said. Now it's written in books, and people just assume it's fact. You're talking about Julius Irving, Larry Bird, Moses Malone, and myself all getting in a huddle someplace and saying, hey, let's not give Jordan the ball. I mean, that is absurd. But how did that story even come about? Considering at this stage in their careers, there was no beef or rivalry yet. This was a fourth year player and a first year rookie superstar in Jordan. Well, this is the breakdown. It was actually all brought up by a newspaper columnist who got the story to kick off. The reporter's name was Charlie Vincent and he worked at the Detroit Free Press. Because of this, he became close with the Michigan guys, Isaiah Thomas and Magic Johnson. He also became close with George Andrews who was Magic Johnson's agent. This is what Andrews said really happened. On Saturday night during workouts, Michael wore his Nike warm-ups, which at the time was a violation of the NBA's protocol. He was promoting Nike. He was ignoring an unwritten rule that you wore All-Star stuff to the All-Star game. Some of the All-Stars, particularly Isaiah and Magic, supposedly took offense to this. Or maybe they were just sick of Jordan's popularity. Either way, the story goes that the veteran guys got upset, saying, Who the heck is this rookie? He's not acting the way that he should, and so on. No question, they were just mad at him. Which, to be honest, at the time, it's kind of fair enough when you think about it. You have this rookie who just comes in the league and decides to do what he likes and wear what he wants, but at the same time, he was Michael Jordan. The legend has it that some of the older guys like Isaiah, Magic, Gervin, thought that Michael Jordan was coming off as cocky and arrogant. The fans voted Jordan, after all, as an all-star starter during his rookie season, with the most votes in the history at that time, leading to what Jordan would call jealousy. He suggested that they were just upset by the amount of attention Jordan was receiving. But I, I finally figured out as I got older that natural jealousy is a part of professional uh, sports in any job. Mm -hmm. And I felt um, I skipped a lot of steps. Uh, 
uh, coming into the league. I didn't work my way up to the top. I skipped a lot of steps, and sometimes that creates some jealousies and, and uh, just natural jealousies. Of course, today, it really wouldn't matter. You can wear anything you like. The dress code back then, though, was pretty straightforward. Everyone kind of wore the same thing, and he may have just rubbed them the wrong way. That's what Jordan believes as well. In an interview, he publicly stated that they were out to get him, and he truly believed at the time that there was a freeze-out conspiracy to not let him put on a show. Welcome back. When Michael Jordan entered the NBA in 1984, it was the League of Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. While it seems hard to imagine today, back then, Michael was often cast in the role of the outsider. It wasn't always fun, though, admittedly, with uh, you and Magic and Isaiah. I'm talking about 1985. A lot of basketball fans are aware there was what they call the freeze-out. For some reason, Isaiah and Magic didn't necessarily like it, what you were doing on the court, and they decided to have their own little freeze of Michael Jordan, not to literally not let them uh, be affected by you or for you to be a factor in the game. You were able to smooth it over over the years, but initially it was difficult to get acceptance. It was tough uh, because I, I was very confused. I didn't understand exactly what was going on. I didn't understand the reasoning. Uh, I felt that, uh, you know, I always felt that I was the lowest on the totem pole and had to work my way up, so I didn't go in cocky. I made sure that I wasn't going to do that. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. And can't we just watch the game ourselves and figure it out for ourselves? And yes, you could. I mean, I'll put the link in the description. Feel free to watch it. But when I watch it personally, I personally don't see any kind of plan to suggest that they were putting a freeze out on Jordan. But then sometimes I do go back and look and say, well, maybe they could have passed it here. Maybe they could have passed it there. Because in the end, Jordan would only end up having nine shots, which is not a lot for an all-star starting player. Whilst no player involved has ever confirmed that the freeze-out game ever occurred, the story has long been reported and Jordan has even spoken about it, whilst Isaiah Thomas has ridiculed about the idea that he masterminded a plan to freeze out Jordan, and he claims it was ludicrous. But in his autobiography, For the Love of the Game, Jordan said this, I was very aware of what I had done on the court during the first half of my rookie year. The last thing I wanted to do in the 1985 All-Star game was draw even more attention to myself. I brought my family with me to the All-Star game, and the plan was to soak in all the atmosphere, meet the players, and play the game. My mindset was to blend in and not make any waves, exactly what I was trying to avoid happen anyway. I broke out the first Nike Air Jordan sweats during the slam dunk competition, and certain players, Isaiah Thomas and Dominic Wilkins for starters, thought I was being disrespectful. I thought I was doing Nike a favor. They'd invested so much in me, and I figured that wearing the warm-ups would just be good for the company. There were other incidents, if you want to call them that, where I was perceived one way when I was thinking the complete opposite. Someone said that I didn't say hello to Isaiah in an elevator. But there was a reason. I was in an elevator full of great players, and I was afraid to say anything. I didn't want to come off as being too confident, so I didn't say a word. The next day, I'm back in Chicago and a reporter comes up to me after practice and tells me about the freeze out. He said Isaiah, Gervin and some other players were laughing about how they tried to embarrass me during the game by freezing me out or not giving me the ball. I didn't notice a thing to tell you the truth, but that incident was one of my most painful experiences of my life up to that point. The next night, we played Detroit at home and I played like I was possessed. And well, he did. <laughs> Here's the game. Jordan went for 49 points versus the Pistons in a game known as the Freeze Out Revenge Game. So in the end, no one really knows what actually happened behind closed doors. Do you think that Isaiah Thomas had it out for Jordan and told his teammates not to let this young rookie just do whatever he wants? Do you think he really made a plan to prevent him? Or do you think that there was just no plan at all? Jordan just didn't do that much during the All-Star game and blamed it on Isaiah and Magic later on. Jordan did state that he thought the freeze-out game initially occurred, but then recently during his Hall of Fame speech, he retracted that statement saying that he was just happy to be there. Isaiah Thomas, Magic Johnson, George Gervin, now they say it was a so-called freeze-out in, in, in my rookie season. I wouldn't have never guessed, but you guys gave me the motivation to say, you know what, evidently I haven't proved enough to these guys. I got to prove to them that I deserve what I've gotten on this level. And no matter what people may have said, if it was a rumor, I never took it as, as, as truth. But you guys never froze me out because I was just happy to be there, no matter how you look at it. 
But something tells me that the look on Isaiah's face maybe suggests that he was part of a conspiracy to stop Jordan. Honestly, if you guys want to know my opinion, I believe when Jordan was playing, he used this as motivation, even if it wasn't true. He used it to fuel him, because Jordan would use anything for motivation, and knowing Jordan, we know he loves getting back at people who once crossed him. Now, on the flip side, I wouldn't put it past Isaiah to try to put Jordan back in his place. Plus the fact that Isaiah was probably a little jealous of Jordan, Jordan being the face of Chicago, and Isaiah being a Chicago native, with MJ getting all the love. So when I watch the game, I don't really see any conspiracy at all. So with that said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe for more. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and let's see if we can reach 1,000 likes for the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out some of my other videos right now. I'm out. Peace.